up? I'm very happy to tell you that this chapter is so short that actually it's just theory. If you want to practice, uh, maybe because some uh, teachers want you to learn a little bit more on mechanisms or pathways, I have it on my webpage. But in general, I'm just going to expose you the topic of reaction mechanisms. Why do we need them? And why do or why is it important? Because this is typical uh, homework or task for the chemist, not that much for the chemical engineer. Actually, you will have someone in the lab, you will ask him, or probably you're going to go to a lab. But it's very important as an engineer to understand why is it important. Why are you paying him so much? in order to get these reaction mechanisms or maybe the map of pathways. So this is just an overview. Uh, don't think we're going to do that much. And yeah, essentially, let's go here. You know, we already master our isothermal reactor design course, which is actually also multiple reactions and collection of data. We're just going to see a little bit on mechanisms on how can we model non uh, elementary rate loss and after we finish chapter 8 I think you are almost done guys this is the, the general course for chemical engineering bachelor for reactor engineering of course we need to see a little bit of catalysis and catalyst res residence time distribution non ideal reactors and this actually almost nothing actually chapter 9 is not a common topic and this may be a little bit just theory and a little bit theory. Anyways, let's continue. We are still working with the same pillars here. This is chapter 8. But with this we will be able to model better, better our rate data and to model more... Where is it here? Laboratory reactors, more... In general, non-ideal or non-elementary rate of reactions. Once again, I tell you this is an overview, so you want to know extra, maybe just send me an email and let's see what we can do. But normally, you don't need that much as an engineer. If this is a typical topic that you will do maybe in a master topic or in a, maybe in a lab or something like that. Because I, I told you before, this is like chemists, the, the people that love chemistry, but we are engineers. We are put into practice what they understand and they work they give us the model and we work with that model and also in this chapter uh, I didn't tell you but there's a part in bioengineering biochemical engineering and stuff like enzymes and all that kind of stuff maybe it sounds a little bit weird for you we're not going to see that part because that's also either you're studying biochemical engineer. I'm sorry for you guys, but for chemical engineers, this is not the common topic to study. Or maybe you're studying something in chemistry or chemical engineering. This is very common also in master degree. So just relax and know that this stuff exists. Know why it's important and read, read a little bit to in order to know what's or why it's not that bad not to know it to the hundred percent. Now let me show you the content. I broke it down into two parts, actually three parts, but this red part is not included. If you really want it, you can send me a message and maybe I can upload it, a course, especially on this topic, but as a chemical engineer, I don't think it's useful. Or of course it's useful, but it's not that common that you need to learn it in a bachelor degree. So let me continue with this, it's section number one reaction mechanisms essentially we're going to see what's an active intermediate we're going to model non-elementary rate loss we're going to propose some mechanisms how I mean the basic ones and what's a chain reaction uh, probably you heard the chain reaction in nuclear chemistry well it's not the same it's kinda the same the same like, concept that previous uh, reaction is the next reaction and so on but this one is typically the same one and here is going to be actually a different one. Once we get that, we're going to go to the reaction pathways and pathways is essentially all the new ways or new forms or new paths that the reaction may take. 
And that's essentially the overview of chapter 7. You really want to continue here, just go to the next video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.